Hi, my name is Wayne, and I'm from Grafton, Grafton, Wisconsin. And uh, the car is a 1967 Corvette. And the question that it, uh, is always asked is, how long have you had it? And uh, I have, I've had this car since 1974. So I've had it a long time. Uh, the uh, engine is a L68, 400 horsepower, uh, tri-carb, three carburetors. You can never have enough carburetors, it seems. So um, the, the uh, car has been all rebuilt. Uh, I did that starting in 2004, and then uh, uh, put the correct engine, the car that, or the engine that the, the car was born with, as they say, uh, did that in uh, 2008. So now the car is complete and very original to uh, the way it was made uh, in 1967. This is an October, this car was built October tw uh, 26, 1966. So it's, uh, uh, the color is uh, uh, silver. The, uh, it has the, ra the rally wheels, uh, meaning the rally wheel and trim rings and uh, disc, uh, the center discs uh, will say uh, uh, disc brakes. Um, it's obviously a convertible. Um, it's uh, just very enjoyable to have. Uh, I belong to uh, two different car clubs uh, uh, in Sheboygan, the Kettle Moraine Corvette Club, and then also in, uh, I live in, Gra in the Grafton Cedarburg area, the Uzaki Corvette Club, uh, two different clubs I belong to. So uh, I appreciate your interest in the car and my chance to talk about it. My name is Mark. I'm from the Plymouth area. This is a 1974 Porsche 914 LE. Porsche made 500 of these in 1974, uh, basically in recognition of uh, winning the Can-Am the year before with their Porsche 917. It's a California car. It's been totally restored, uh, and it's been restored to the original condition. I've owned the car for about two years now, and um, there's a registry, and uh, supposedly there's only 92 left uh, now in the U.S., so um, it's a pretty rare Porsche 914. I'm Bob Scheringer from uh, Luxembourg, Wisconsin. Uh, the car you're looking at is a 1997 Ferrari 355 GTS. The GTS is rather rare. That means the top comes off. Uh, the 355, this is, uh, except the 355, uh, this is a 97. They produce this model for four years. It started with the uh, Tom Selleck in the, in the TV series he was in. He's, he had a 308 then. At, it's, it's a V8 versus most Ferraris are, are 12 cylinders. Uh, so the one, like I say, Selleck had was a, was a V8, that was a 308, then they did the 328, the 348, and then the uh, 355, like this one. Uh, in its day, in 1997, this was the fastest production car you could get, which is unique because it is a V8. Uh, it is it's very fast on the road, of course. It, it hugs the road. Uh, what, what's unique about it is it's got five valves per cylinder, uh, which is unique for any car. And the, uh, the valves are located in the piston, uh, which is also unique, but that's what Ferrari is known for. Uh, it is also the, the complete undercarriage is built like a turtle, which makes it sleek and makes it stick to the ground. It, it just hugs the ground just, just like a cat does. Uh, it is a phenomenal car. Of course, it follows the reputation of Ferrari and uh, their reputation on, of course, fast cars, as well as uh, engineering. Uh, so it's very hard to find these, and uh, we've had it now for about six years. Uh, I, I've, I've had cars for years, starting with Corvettes and then some Porsches and a Jaguar, but uh, the Ferrari was a new experience for me. Uh, again, we've had it for about six or seven years. Uh, my son pretty well maintains it for me. Ferraris do require attention because they are a fine-tuned car. Uh, with, with a lot of uh, engineering in it, and you have to have somebody that can take care of it because they, they, they do require a lot of attention. Uh, it, of course, it's, uh, it's amazing to drive. Uh, it's, 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 there's a commercial that says, does your car turn you on when you turn the key? Well, I guarantee you, the 355 does turn you on when you, you, you turn on the key. 
<clears throat> another thing unique about the uh, 355 or the Ferraris of this vintage is they have a unique sound to them. Uh, nothing else sounds like the uh, Ferrari and the uh, engineering and their, the motors that they've got. And of course, this is a V8. Most Ferraris are, are V12s. Despite that, this V8 is, is just as fast as, as the 12 cylinders in their day. And <clears throat> again, it is a very unique car. Black is unusual for a Ferrari. Uh, I prefer black. Most Ferraris are red. Uh, I've always loved the, uh, the black with the saddle or Palmino interior, as this one is. It's also rare. Um, we're, well, if my wife isn't listening, uh, it, it doesn't take long at all to get up to 160 down a straightaway, but you always worry about something jumping out from the side of the road and, and, and don't do that very often. But we're at Elkhart Lake right now at the beautiful Ostoff Resort. Uh, we take it on the track here at times, so some of the, s the speeds we do attain are on a, on a track. But the speed I'm going to reach 200. Uh, I believe the factory models in 97, they claimed would do somewhere about 175 or 180 miles an hour. Um, very fascinating car. Very, it, it gets attention no matter where it goes, simply because there just aren't a lot of Ferraris around. Um, The 1945 Indian Chief, the last year they had a leaf spring front end. Uh, it's a 74 cubic inch with a three-speed transmission. I restored it uh, about two years ago. There's about 5,000 miles on it. Uh, runs and drives excellent. Just a great running bike. It was a civilian bike, so it's a little rare because during the war there wasn't that many made. So, but it's a great running driving bike. You can't beat it. My name is Gary. This is a 1974 Triumph TR6. It had been in a barn for 14 years where I've located it and it has exactly 57,000 miles on it. It was uh, just, the restoration was just started in May this year when it was painted and cleaned. And after that point, it was all put together and as of today, it's taken three and a half months to completely reassemble it from a total frame off restoration. It's uh, totally stock has some 50% new parts, 50% old parts. Uh, overall a new top, original bumpers, red line tires. It's uh, a classic 76 Triumph. Looking at the dash in this, it's orig the original dash, it's been redone. And original steering wheel, all original gauges, original wiring. This by the interior is a brand new interior that was totally restored. It's got a brand new top under the boot cover here. Okay. This is a six, standard six cylinder Triumph uh, engine. Uh, it's not, nothing has been done to it outside of uh, getting it fired up and running. Today is the actual first day that it was run any major miles and it has performed flawlessly. How fast can you go with it? This car is capable of whatever the speedometer says of approximately 140 miles an hour. I that's I don't think I want to go that fast with it, not around here. On a track I would gladly try it. The paint job is brand new. It's uh, not more than uh, since May, so it's like a three and a half month old paint job on it, and it's taken uh, a lot of, a lot, a lot of work to get her back together. Hi, Hi there. My name's uh, Reed Doman, and I'm the uh, proud owner of this here uh, Triumph. It is a 1969 uh, GT6 Plus, and uh, we picked it up about four years ago. And me and my dad. Uh, uh, we bought it for about two thousand dollars, and we've restored it into this condition right here. And uh, the paintwork is actually done by uh, Prestige Auto Works, and it turned out just beautifully. I would say um, a nice signal red. Its original color was a little bit of an um, off green color, but we decided to go a little bit more, uh, a little sparkly, uh, a nicer. A little, it's better for showing, but um, yeah, it's it's been my pride and joy for the past few years. I love driving it. Hi there, my name is John Doman, and uh, I have been a Triumph owner for about uh, 30 years of my driving history. 
this particular Triumph that I have now is a Triumph TR3B. It is uh, titled as a 1963 and the car was actually built and titled originally as a 62. That was the last year of the, the Roadster uh, TR3 series. It was a run that, that uh, Standard Triumph did on behalf of the uh, North American Dealership Association because uh, the dealers here were too concerned about the cost and the lack of classic lines that the TR4, uh, which was the, the uh, uh, follow-up to the TR3, was going to offer the American uh, marketplace. So this was the last of the run, and as a matter of fact, uh, the TR3B uh, TCF series, which this car is, was built by Forward Radiator. Uh, that became a subsidiary of, of Standard Motors uh, at a later date, but due to the fact that the uh, lines over at, at Standard Motor at that point in time were filled with the TR4 series, they had to spin this one off for production to satisfy the marketplace needs of the North American uh, dealerships. But this also incorporated a 2138cc uh, engine, uh, which was uh, introduced at the time of the TR4, and also the full synchronized uh, four-speed transmission. Uh, prior to that time, all the TR3s had a uh, uh, first gear that was non-synchronized. The, the difference uh, between this car and, and the uh, earlier TR3s is, is really limited to those two factors. Uh, this car, now I've owned for about five years, uh, had it totally restored. Um, the work in body work and uh, uh, engine rebuild were done by uh, Tom and Kay Kovacs with Foreign Tune in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. I don't touch paint and body work at all. Uh, but everything else, I, I take a great deal of pride and enthusiasm. It's quite a hobby for me, so I enjoy the time in putting back together uh, all of the clean parts as opposed to taking the, the greasy ones apart and uh, tearing it down for rebuild. But this is about the uh, eighth Triumph that I've owned over the years now. Uh, my third TR3. I still have a TR4 from college years and, uh, and enjoy them immensely. Uh, they're simplistic to work on, uh, easy to, to rebuild. It's all nuts and bolts. If you've got a half inch and a three, excuse me, nine sixteenth inch and a couple of screwdrivers, you can pretty well take this thing apart. Uh, and all it needs at that point is a little enthusiasm on your part, and you can rebuild these pretty easily. But uh, it keeps me uh, busy during the winter months, and, and uh, I'm very happy to be able to spend as much time as I can with them, with the family uh, uh, and such. It's a fun hobby for me. My name's Richard. This is my 1966 Austin Mini Cooper S. Uh, contrary to popular belief, BMW did not invent the Mini Cooper. This is the original. Uh, it's a 1275cc, uh, which was the big engine. This is kind of the hot rod of the of the line of minis. This is the car that dominated the Monte Carlo rally through the mid 60s. This won that rally in January in atrocious weather in uh, 64, 65, 66, and 67. They were disqualified in 66 because the French didn't like the fact that the minis were winning at their rally so they disqualified them for having illegal headlights. So just to prove their point, they came back again in 67 and won it outright again. So effectively, they had four Monte Carlo wins in a row. Uh, this car went into production in 1959, and it's been in production through 2000. This is the original transverse engine front wheel drive uh, layout. Uh, the engine is above the transmission. Uh, they share the same oil. Uh, it's, a, it's a full four passenger car. It's a lot bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And it, it's, it handles like a go-kart. It's just a, a real, real hoot to drive. Hi, my name is Jordan Brill. I'm from Kiel, Wisconsin. And what you're looking at here is a 1969 AMX. It was built by American Motors right here in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Um, this is a special color that was introduced 
1969, about mid-year. It's called Big Bad Green. Um, this car is a 394 speed, 354 to 1 differential, uh, positive traction. It has the optional leather seats. Um, I actually bought the car in 1998 from the original owner and restored it myself. And the restoration is about 10 years old right now. Um, this particular color on this car, because it was introduced so late in the year, they only built 283 of these in this color. And it also has the color coated bumpers. Um, that was a special thing in 1969. These colors were continued in 1970, but then the cars had chrome bumpers instead of the color keyed bumpers. Uh, leather interior is charcoal. There are different options on this car. Light group, visibility group, the go pack. It's a 390, 320, 315 horse. Um, power steering, power disc brakes. And that is about it. It's a 1967 Jaguar E-Type. This is a one of a kind coach built car. It's made of steel and aluminum, not a kit. It has a 4.2 liter inline six twin overhead cam, producing probably around 350 horsepower. Custom made exhaust system. As I said earlier, the scoops on the body are all hand formed steel. The doors are formed aluminum. Cockpit trim is all hand formed aluminum. Windscreen, all hand formed aluminum. The transmission tunnel, formed steel. Car is about one foot wider than an original E type Jaguar in the rear and about eight and three quarters of an inch wider than an original stock bodied car in the front. How long do you have this car? I've had this car, I built this car starting eight years ago. It was a five year build process. About 5,000 hours. This is a 1949 Cadillac, model 62. They call it Sedanette. With a French gray is the color on it. As we move along, uh, a lot of the questions come up where we put the fuel in a car and have a lot of fun with the people uh, quizzing where this happens at, so we'll show you. And of course it happens right here in the left rear tail light. So the people at GM were thinking when they did that. How long you at this car? I've had the car 25 years. Did you uh, restore that completely? I didn't do the complete restoration on it, but uh, always doing something to it to give it a little more of an update, but it's uh, very enjoyable to drive. It, uh, Handles very well. It's an automatic in it with the uh, white, white radio tires on it. Has the overhead valve, the first year of the overhead valve V8 for Cadillac. So it's pretty trouble free. The original owner uh, owned the Marcusan Canning Company in Marcusan, Wisconsin, and then he traded it. And uh, we followed the original owner's don't know for sure what he traded it for but the next owner was a it was sold at an auction but someplace along from the original owner till uh, when it was sold at auction they cut off the back part and made it into a pickup truck what, they, first of all what kind of car it is oh it's a 1918 Hudson Phaeton which means that it's a convertible and it's a four passenger Phaeton or six passenger Phaeton excuse me well, anyhow, um, four or six, however you could cram into it, how many kids you have. So anyways, um, they made it into a truck and we have pictures of that in there because 1918 World War I started and uh, the automobile companies went out of uh, private construction because they went into the war effort. They were making tanks, they were making the big trucks and uh, the people who had automobiles, many people, made them into either tractors or trucks to haul around their wood, their livestock, whatever they needed. And so when we got it, 
the um, back part was missing. And it took many years for us to find it, but we finally did, and so then we could begin the restoration. Those and are those are the original wooden spoke wheels. Um, my husband knew somebody that liked to do that kind of refinishing work. Boy, am I glad he didn't stick me with that job. <laughs> but uh, naturally, we do not drive it at highway speeds because uh, we just kind of like to keep our height intact <laughs> and everybody else too. It has rear wheel brakes. It does not have front wheel brakes. That's another reason to keep it off of highway speeds. We just drive it around the village. Hello and today we're looking at a 1930 American Austin Coupe. Uh, the American Austin was brought to the U.S. by Sir Her uh, Herbert Austin and uh, he did that in 1927. He was looking to do a spring off of the English Austin cars. Um, he got the company started in Butler, Pennsylvania, and uh, this is actually the first year of production in 1930, and the car brand ran until 1934, due to the Depression, um, ended up going out of business. Uh, from 1930 to 34, they produced about 60,000 cars in various body styles, from coupes to little pickup trucks to roadsters, to four-seater convertibles. They're a 750 cc engine or three-quarters of a liter engine producing 12 horsepower and actually got 60 miles to the gallon. The car is capable of going about 45 miles an hour down the road uh, with the wind to the back a little bit. The cars were originally advertised as your second car. Uh, most vehicles on, at the time uh, were a little bit larger and uh, a small car was advertised as the thing that you could still fit around the household. There weren't a lot of customers after various films came out including the Three Stooges and Little Rascals that actually had fun with the cars unloading clowns from them or doing short skits and having fun. Um, some of the pranks that occurred with cars is you could actually lift the car with four people because it literally weighs a thousand pounds. Uh, so people would put them up on a garbage can and uh, the owner might come out of the building and not be able to do it. At one university it was actually brought up to the fourth floor and put on the roof of the building um, so the university professor couldn't actually get home that evening. So, uh, so people uh, ended up not buying a lot of the cars into 33 and 34. Um, this car at the time in 1930 was priced $5 below a uh, Ford Model A. So it was about $435 for a car like this and for 440 you got a Model A that was probably just about twice its size. So value for the American consumer wasn't as high as what uh, you would have seen through Europe at the time. Hi, my name is Behold Felder and this Sunbeam Tiger um, belongs to uh, me and my husband Tom. Although I'm the original uh, driver of the car, I've owned it since uh, I think it was 1968 when we bought it used and it sat in our car museum in California for a long time and it was uh, restored about five years ago and it already has dings in it, but it's got a, a V8 Ford 289 engine and it's been taken out on the track. How it, fast did you go? Well, actually, um, at the time, the speedometer wasn't working and I'm not uh, a real speedster, so I probably didn't go over 100 but it um, becomes a little bit unstable because the engine is heavy. The front end becomes a little bit more unstable, um, but it's a joy to drive. And we brought it from California, from our museum to uh, Wisconsin two years ago uh, so that we could enjoy it driving on these wonderful roads here in Wisconsin. 
this is a 1932 MG J2 midget and uh, we've owned this car for, since 1982 and it's been restored from the uh, from boxes basically uh, it's restored in a uh, very original uh, way and uh, very little uh, aftermarket stuff on it and so what you're looking at is uh, the way it came out of the factory in 1932. Uh, the colors are original. You have uh, Oxford and Cambridge blue. Uh, all the lights and uh, engine are original to this car. Um, it's uh, we drive it a little bit. Uh, we show it a lot more. It uh, has won a lot of uh, a lot of trophies and a lot of awards, and we're very proud of it. And, Okay, it's a 1974 Ferrari. It's called a GT. I'm sorry, a G246 GTS. It's a Spider. It's uh, kind of unusual. It's got a, a different set of wheels that came from the factory. It's got flares that came from the factory. It does not have what they call the chairs. So the, the, usually they used to call it a chairs and flares well i'm just short of the chairs it's the history is i bought it probably in the late 70s had it ever since it was my first wife's car and it's a beautiful car it runs like a sewing machine it's just a wonderful car thank you this is a 1962 pontiac grand prix the first year they made the grand prix uh it's a total frame off restoration I bought it four years ago in Pennsylvania um, it's got the original interior and glass it's got a 389 tri power engine in it with uh, about 318 horsepower uh, it was fully restored and we drive it I got about 2,000 miles on it this year so we bought it to drive it and that's uh, and we take it to some shows we uh, took it down to St. Charles Illinois in July and we took uh, first place in the Grand Prix class so it was quite an honor and we got invited here today so
The car is a 1952 Cadillac Allard Roadster. It's a J2X. There were 82 built and 33 were destroyed in racing. My father bought the car in 1959, so it's been in the family since 1959, and it was recently restored by Eric Wittick. This is our first time for the races and um, we're thrilled to be here because my dad originally saw the Allards racing here at Elkhart Lake and he went out and looked for an Allard and he found this Allard in Cleveland um, and bought it from a professor in 1959. The car was raced by a female race driver in 1955 at the Cumberland races, Peggy McClure. She actually came in number six out of 17. Um, we love to ride in the car and share it with others. And I have many fond memories of racing in it or riding in it through the Kettle Moraine with my father. The car has a 331 V8 Cadillac engine. It has a Lincoln transmission. The rear end is Jaguar. It was built in England by Sidney Allard, who had a Ford dealership. He had originally approached the Ford Motor Company and asked them to design a car to race in the Le Mans, and Ford said no, so he decided to build one himself. An interesting fact is um, Sidney Allard did not like the rear hydraulic braking system, so post-war, again, 1952, he um, brought in um, surplus supplies from the B-24 Lancaster bombers and the hydraulic brakes are actually from uh, surplus supplies from the B-24 bombers and are the release mechanisms from the bombers. Um, the car is about 2,700 pounds. The engine is about 790 pounds in weight. It's a aluminum body and um, it hugs the road and flies like a bat. And um, we're thrilled to have it here at Elkhart Lake to share it with others. Thank you. I'm John Seaman and I'm here at Gather on the Green. And this is a 1935 Ford Woody station wagon with a very early Adirondack guide boat that was made about 1895 to 1900, the best that we can figure out. The Woody station wagon came from Camp St. Mary in upstate New York. My grandfather, Frank Boone, was caretaker of the camp at the time from the 1930s through the 1950s. It was a Catholic seminary camp and they used this Woody to carry the seminarians back and forth to town and they also used it in the fall to get firewood for the wood stove in the house. My grandfather lived near the camp. When I was growing up, my family used to ride in the woody occasionally, and I can remember sitting on the tailgate swinging my feet as a kid when I was growing up. My grandmother and grandfather are shown in some old photos that came from my mother's photo album from back in the 50s and the car is loaded with logs. They had about seven logs in the car. They take them to the sawmill and then take the split firewood and load it into the woody right up to the ceiling 
and haul that back up to the house and put it in the cellar for the wood stove. The camp closed about 19, early 1960s and we went to the camp owner and we asked him, what are you going to do with the car? We'd like to buy it. And he said, for your grandfather's dedication to the car, you can have it. So that's how we got the Woody. It was pretty rough at the time and uh, we had it restored from 1988 to 1990. And now we have and we're enjoying it here in Wisconsin. It was brought out here about 2003. The boat that you see is an Adirondack guide boat and they were made in 1895 to 1900 and about up to 1910. They were using the Adirondack Mountains in upstate New York to take people back into their camps and to take people from the city back hunting and fishing in the summertime. The guides would build these boats and they're very unique construction. They're made of spruce ribs with pine planking. The spruce ribs are made from a tree trunk so you get the natural curvature of the rib for strength. The pine planking is very thin, it's only an eighth inch thick and it's fastened to the ribs with screws. Then each plank is bevel fit to the next one and fastened with tacks that are clinched both inside and out. So all you have to do is soak up the boat with water and it very, leaks very little. Uh, this boat has the original varnish patina on it that it's had probably for many, many years, being about 100 years old. So that's the story of the Camp St. Mary Woody and the Adirondack Guideboat, uh, which are very dear to my heart.